Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at how to install the legendary snowman cooler onto a Intel motherboard. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at how you would install the snowman cooler, which is the MT-4. Same principle for pretty much most of the coolers, and actually quite a few of the other ones on the market. Although this one is particularly uh, challenging because essentially it comes with, uh, well, yeah, no instructions whatsoever. Also, it's not entirely clear from the set out how it all goes together. So the first thing to do is to look at the actual components. So the majority of the mounting components are this mounting ring, which is the standard mounting ring, which has got holes set into the actual outer arms here for 1366, 11.5x and 775. Now, the reason behind that is because this was designed quite a long time ago and actually only technically supports those setups. So depending on which motherboard you've got, this is an LGA 1200, which fortunately is kind of somewhere in between the 775 and 11.5x sizing. So you can actually use either. So if you look very closely onto the ring itself, you'll notice there are three very, very small indentations You'll get some close-ups of this on the camera, so uh, don't worry if you can't quite see it at the moment. But essentially what you need to do is to work out which one of those you need. Now it does actually say, actually on the outer ring, very, very tiny writing, which one of those actually is which. So essentially the 775 is the one closest to the inner ring, then you go to 11.5x, which is the next one out, which is about a millimetre different, and then in the very extended position is the 1366. So hopefully that makes some sense. The next part of the uh, equation, there are four little plastic kind of holders, and these actually slot in. So let's go ahead and do that straight away. So we know our board is an LGA 1200, and we know that is pretty much somewhere between 775 and 1150X. So I'm gonna use the 1150X, so we're gonna slot this in into the second channel out, which is actually probably the most fiddly one to do of all of them. Obviously the easiest ones to do are the very outside ones. So there's two plastic channels, which this actually pushes down into. And hopefully, again, I'll show you some close-ups of this. But essentially, you push the plastic in until it is completely flush with the top section of the ring. Then you go around and do the other three. And that one went in straight away, so that was great. So when you've got all four of your plastic retainers installed and in the flat position, then you're ready to get on with the next part of the job, which is actually to remove the existing Intel cooler. So in order to do that, what we'll do is we'll set the camera up so it's over the top so you can get a picture of what is going on here. So the first thing to do is uh, we can actually hark back to one of our previous videos for this. So to release the Intel mounting mechanism, actually on the outer arms here on each one of the four, there is actually an arrow. And basically the pointing of the arrow is the way you want to spin the actual top. So with a flat headed screwdriver, just put it into the top here and spin it around 90 degrees. And then you'll find that the arrow actually meets up with the cooler. So we'll go ahead and do that on all the other three. And once you've done that, then you can actually lift up the plastic lugs. They should snap out. So that is the, uh, essentially it disconnected and then a little bit of a wiggle This is actually a lot easier if you warm up the thermal paste beforehand. And there might take a bit of a tug. That one's on pretty well. You see the uh, the paste was cold, so it hasn't come off particularly well. So anyway, that is the, the CPU actually ready now. So what we'll do is we'll clean up the CPU briefly, put some more thermal paste on, and then we'll be back to finish off. Okay, so we've got our little blob of uh, thermal paste on top of our CPU, so now we can get the the rest of the mounting mechanism installed. So essentially the mounting mechanism's got four posts, as you'd expect, and they fit into the standard location holes. So what you can do is just squeeze the uh, the plastic in, make sure they're all make sure they're all in the right places, and then just line them up. You should find they line up straight away. If for some reason they don't line up, then you may need to change your mounting mechanism for the uh, one of the other sizes. And they just snap into place, in theory. And 
do have to be a little bit uh, a little bit rough with it. So just make sure it's fully pushed in. I think I know what I did actually. That one there in this corner is not quite straight, as you can see in the mountains there. That should be straight across in the pins, whereas that one is on a very slight angle. So let's uh, pop that one back out. And that flies out with uh, quite a bit of haste. Let's try that again. So again, making sure it's straight in the lugs and actually we're a little bit too close. It's quite a fiddly uh, process for the Intel setup on these. There we go. So we just make see that is going to go into the uh, the lugs and snap that into place. So that's our mountain ring installed. So I'll show you what the back looks like. Try not to get thrown paste on my hands. So you've got the same sort of plastic lugs and essentially when this pin passes through it spreads out those lugs to prevent them popping back through. It's a good idea at this point to actually make sure that they are fully all the way through. Always good to check that just to make sure it doesn't pop out. If you check on the angle you can just see they're, uh, they're kind of hanging on by the edge of the plastic. So actually we want to put those pins through now so you can actually see it. So just get them ready. Again there's four of them. And you may have to lift the motherboard up to do this because the plastic is going to try and push through a little bit. So just a little bit of support underneath would be fine. Push those through, push that one through, push that one through. And then now you can see on the back the, uh, the plastic has come through a little bit and is spreading out those little plastic lugs to hold it all in place. And that should now be very snug and you shouldn't be able to, uh, to move that off of there. Again, putting this down on a flat surface is making one of these pop back up a bit. So you may find at this point you want to put it onto some sort of cloth or uh, a microfiber or some sort of anti-static device of your choice. So the next part is to actually install the cooler itself. So the cooler actually has a mounting mechanism, which is very common to AM4 type devices, AM3. So you've got a, uh, a lug front and rear on like a, a clip mechanism. So you use the clip mechanism either top and bottom or front and back, whichever you want to do. So ideally to get optimal airflow with the fans spinning the right direction, pulling air from the front and pushing out the back. Then we want to do it in this situation. Now with this, with it set this way, if you have the the lever near the graphics card, this is going to make it a lot easier to take off in future. So you'd only have to take your graphics card out rather than having to actually take the motherboard out and try and risk getting down into the VRM section. So for me, I would say hook over this section first at the back, do that to the top of the board, which is uh, possibly on the bottom on your screen because I'm looking at it upside down. So just latch it over and then loop that over on this side. So let's move this cable out of the way because that is going to be a bit annoying. So first of all, if I do it from this side and we're going to latch this section over there. So just dangle it over. There we go. You can hear that kind of latching in and then kind of get it set right. And then a little bit of downward pressure on the other side, which you're not going to be able to see at the moment. So I'm just going to push down and there you can just hear about that clicking into place. Just spin that right now so you can see it. So whilst that was under tension, basically with your thumb, press down on here and then you can latch it. It's very tight actually by that M.2 freezer shield. You can just about see there, there is the uh, little plastic lug sticking through just there. And that is what it catches on. So in order to release it, all you do is put the pressure on there, which is really difficult for me to film, but put some pressure down and then bend it outwards and then release it and then snap it back on again to secure it. So that is how to secure it. I do apologize for the, uh, the very bad camera angles. Unfortunately, this is one of those coolers which is set up in such a way that it is very, very difficult to actually show you what is going on with any real levels of detail. So get a good idea there. Anyway, there's the cable in. So the last thing to do is to connect up your CPU fan and then decide what you want to do with the wiring. 
But essentially, when it's done, that is pretty much what it should look like. So you've got your snowman on the ram side, and then that is going to jet air through and be exhausted out the back to the I.O. area with the secondary fan, as you can see. So there we go, there is the Snowman, the M-T4. Again, this is pretty much common across most of the Snowman range, so if you've got a slightly different cooler, you should find it. You've got the same mountain ring and all those kind of plastic parts. For me, the hardest thing about this is because you're adapting the kind of AM4 mounting to the Intel style, one of the biggest problems, especially for modern motherboards, is going to be the fact that the M.2 is going to be really close to where that actual clamping connection is. So you're going to have to use a lot of care and a lot of force in order to get it to clamp on properly. So yeah, not the ideal solution, but essentially this is a super cheap cooler. You can get them on AliExpress if you're lucky for around about 15 to 17 pounds, I think they are at the moment. Although import taxes are increasing daily. So do take that into consideration. We have used Arctic Silver 5 on this particular installation because it doesn't come with any stock pace with it whatsoever. So obviously do pay attention to that also. Temperature wise, I'm not gonna bother doing temperature tests effectively. This is gonna perform pretty much the same as things like your Evo 212, your Arctic Freezer 34, those types of 120 mil tower cooler, Game Axe 400, for example, um, some of the gelid examples, they all perform relatively similar because essentially they are very similar designs. It's four heat pipes with a load of metal and either one or two fans. So yeah, I'm not gonna bother doing temperature test. The processor on here is only 10100F. So it isn't a particularly warm processor anyway, but just wanted to show you how the installation goes if you do decide to uh, upgrade from this monstrosity. So anyway, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, don't forget to give the video a like. And also if you wanna see this type of content on a more regular basis, click on the subscribe button. You never know, you might even like it. So that's enough for now. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.